channels, the Oz Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Like a motherfucking smack addict, right? And as you can tell by today's thumbnail, yes, indeedy, I'm going to write some graffiti on the bus. We're going to talk about shit. A oh, real wild, homes. Pomona 12th Street Sharky Gang. Order to the Sharkies, right? Straight out of Sharky Park. Real talk, homes. We're talking about that SGV, San Gabriel Valle, giving it up, showing them respect, giving them love, homes, because they've earned it. They got that coming, so I was scared. And even if they didn't have that coming, they'll take it. I throw it in that fashion. All right, Pomona 12th Street Sharky Gang. Um, now I have some history with these vatos. I have some history with these vatos because, uh, you know, I did a lot of tiempo in California Youth Authority, and this was my first interaction with Pomona 12th Street, right? I never knew what was up, you know, coming from Northern California, Merced. I met a lot of autos from Sanjo, you know, Shark Steros. Back in them days, man, back in the 90s, eight, late 80s, early 90s, autos were all getting sharks blasted on them. You know, Shark City, uh, Sanjo Shark Steros, uh, Shark Business. All this was getting tatted on autos from Sanjo. I remember a lot of homeboys had sharks, sharks on their stomachs, their backs, oh my, their pecho, whatever the case may be, the homeboys from Sanjo were really representing the sharks. Um, and I remember getting to Fred C. Nellis, getting down there in California Youth Authority down south in Whittier and running into a couple gente, a couple vatos that had sharks on them, but they weren't from Sanjo, right? And so I remember the first vato I approached, he was a little short vato named Negro from Pomona 12th Street. And I hit him up. I said, hey, homes, you homie, what's up? And he took, he must have took me for a, a Sureño, a Southsider, because yeah, I'm a homie, dog, what's up? And I knew right from that, the way he said it, the way he carried himself. That he wasn't a Norteño, right? At, it was at that exact moment, I knew I fucked up, right? So I was like, what's up, bro? Where you from? And he was like, Pomona, 12th Street Sharky Gang. And I was like, that's right, you know? And uh, and that was pretty much that interaction right there for the most part on that time, right? I ended up talking to the Vato. We ended up becoming cool. He was a crazy Vato, man. He was a, a little smaller Vato, smaller than everyone else, but always in the mix, always involved in something. A little mischievous Vato. That's the word of the day, mischievous that's what the vato was, you know, in a menudo style, a direct fashion, I could quietly say, bro, he was handling his business, real talk, um, but then my eyes were open to the shark gang, you know, my eyes were open to Pomona 12th Street Sharkies, and I started to notice that every time we got in the mix, say, in the school area in CYA, and that's where it went down a lot between North and South, man, that school area was basically like no man's land, homes, it was the spot where everybody went and everybody got off, man. That's where you earned your stripes. That's where the North and South Wars took place. You know, of course, on the compas, you had a lot of one-on-ones. Sometimes it would break out into a riot or a melee. Um, but for the most part, the school area was open season. Let that be the reason. Ding, ding. You know what I mean? And Vatos were handling their business. But at the same time, it seemed like all the time, and I noticed, I don't know if any of the other homeboys were noticing, but I noticed that these vatos from the San Gabriel Valle, SGV, as well as Pomona 12th Street Sharkies, predominantly them, for the most part, were always in the mix. Homes, they were always the first ones on forefront, man, on frontline status, handling their business. They put themselves there. They weren't dictated, hey, you guys got to do it. Charlie Holmes, they chose to handle their business. It never seemed to fail. Every time I had a write-up, I would get a write-up. It'd say our names. Um, you know, it'd say fucking what our allegiances were or whatever the case may be. There was always a Vato's name I, rep I recognized from fucking Pomona 12th Street. And I started to become accustomed to who they were. I didn't target them because that's not what I was doing. But at the same time, my eyes were open to what their interactions were and what they were doing. Because I knew at the end of the day, these Vatos posed a threat. They were the ones getting involved in everything. And I remember one time, man, we get to Madison Hall or the Compa Madison, Madison Cottage, they called it. And uh, we already knew it was going to go down, man. We already knew what was up, man. So the homeboys, bad boy and soldier boy from Stockton, they're getting at me. They're like, hey, trip out. Um, any type of frivolous movement, any type of fucking eyes twitching. If a vato coughs or farts in the wrong fashion, homes, let's just get off because it's going to happen anyways. So we get to this Compa, man. There's 10 of us. They bring us there, and of course, this was supposed to be the compa where vatos were going to handle their business. It's being spoke on, it's being talked about. Everyone knew that all the heavy hitters were coming from Madison. All the vatos that would get out of Nixon, which we called the mini shoe program at that time, would go to Madison. This was their first stop, and usually their last stop before TS. Um, YTS, that is. So we get to this compa, so we know it's going to go down, man. It's going to go down hot and heavy. It's going to go down more viciously than it's ever went down anywhere else. Because, like I said, this is where all the vatos, the who's who of the of the institution. And uh, so a vato comes and interacts with this vato. Uh, he's from uh, Southside 13. And he comes up to us. He pretty much has the llaves to the uh, yarda him and another vato named uh, 
I don't want to put his name out there, but he was from Norwalk, right? And um, pretty heavy hitter out of Norwalk had been down for a while. Anyways, they, they get at us and they're like, hey, ain't nothing going to happen on this Gompa Homes. We got shit going down. Um, we're making a lot of moves and power, and, you know, a lot of power moves and shower shoes. So you guys do your fucking thing and we'll do ours. But we already knew homes. That was just, they were trying to put the wool over our eyes. So let's get, hey, here, take that blanket so I can put it over your head and you won't see shit. Nah, ain't going to be no blanket party here, homes. This ain't full metal jacket. So let's get, I ain't about also sucking on my thumb, eating a fucking jelly donut. I already know what time it is. I'm going to get off. Right? So I look at the homeboys like, nah, this is bullshit, right? Ain't never in the whole land of fucking Nellisdom is ever a Swedenian came up and said, oh, it's all good. It ain't never all good. If they say it's all good, it's worse than you, you think. And quietly as it's kept, I was ding, 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 ding. My antennas were good because I was right on point. Um, we came out after chow for night, um, night program and uh, in the day room. And immediately I could tell there was Vatos fumbling and stumbling, man. There was a Vato that was right there by the... Uh, by the water faucet and he had something in his hand and he was shaking a little bit right now he wasn't shaking out of fear he was shaking out of fucking excitement this buck was gonna get off he was you know he was gonna make his next move his best move and i jumped up i remember being the first one to jump up and i and i said a derogatory i said a derogatory term i disrespected the volto so that i could see him have him turn around and see what was in his hand and sure enough it was a piece right the Volta came running at me with the pedazo. We all started getting off, man. The melee erupted. The volcano erupted. Lava was, it was hot that night, right? It was cold. Valtas were doing their thing. Um, there was fighting going on all around me. And I remember the placas started macing and the placas were ready. They knew it was going to crack, man. This was the actually the very first time they had ever shot smoke canisters, you know, which I know it never, I don't think it ever happened again in Nellis. This was a one and done uh, test run, um, but they shot smoke canisters. And I remember it was, it was raining outside. Smoke canisters were going off. Mace was flying. Surrenders and Orthangers were flying everywhere. And I ended up getting hit, right? I ended up getting hit. And I didn't know I was hit. I got hit by nice pick. It probably went in that big. I still got the scars. Just a little one. That chiquita. But I got the scar. And I remember fucking being up against the wall. Mace and I couldn't really see. And the homie soldier boy from Stockton is telling me, hey, you got a piece hanging out of your arm. And I go, for reals? And it was under my underarm. So I lifted my arm and he just pulled it out and threw it, you know, so we wouldn't get caught with the contraband. And they put us all in a van. And anyways, quietly as it's kept somewhere along the line, I come to find out that it was a certain individual that I didn't like anyways um, for Pomona 12 Street Sharkies, right? And I said, damn, it never seems to fail. These Vatos are always in my mix. It's like destiny, Vato. It's like I was known to know these Vatos, right? Uh, it really wasn't, bro. They were just young, crazy, gente, man, handling their business. They were pretty deep in Nellis, man. So you always heard about them. always heard about their barrio. So I remember chopping it up with a couple of them, man, a couple of well-known Vatos. And they're still well-known from Pomona 12th Street. And we got to where we had the conversational tip, man, where we got to chop it up. And, you know, being on a compa for a long time, and a lot of people get it twisted. They automatically think, hey, Norteños and Sureños didn't talk. It was all out war in Charlie Holmes. There was downtime. There was downtime when we conversed. Shit, we talk, knock, knock, who's there? I don't know. I don't know either. So, okay, I don't know you because we don't get along. That's why. There was a lot of corny ass jokes, Holmes, but at the same time, it, it was cool for the most part. And when business time came, business time came. Toma, right? We handed our business. Um, but sabes que, on the other side of that coin, we were chopping it up one day, me and a couple of authors from Pomona Tostri, and I started to uh, uh, ask about their barrio, you know, and, and they told me freely. They told me, you know, they were proud of their barrio, just like Vatos are proud of their heritage, proud of their brown skin. Simon, what's up? I'm Chicano. Um, they started telling me about their barrio, how uh, Sharky Park, and I guess it had a different name, you know. Uh, it changed. Madison Park, I believe it was called, Holmes, if I'm correct, right? I could be wrong, um, but it used to be called Sharky Park. That's where they derived the name Sharkies from. And that there was a couple of audios, man, that uh, they didn't get along with that were actually a part of their body at one point in time, but broke off. I think it was Olive Street and some other fucking audio, right? Um, then they fucking told me, you know, how they were fucking heavy hitters, man, out of the SGV. And so I already could tell, bro. I already could tell that these bottles were, their body was about it. You know, and it was kind of, kind of reminding me of like, say the Samsters or the Mission, uh, the Mission in fucking San Fran or Vario Horseshoe or the West Side Mob out of San Hole. You know, well-known Varios from up Norte that always have hand down every yard of the established and always are fucking in the mix, right? And these Vatos were the same way, you know, and I got to give a lot of respect to their hood and a lot of respect to the San Gabriel Valley in general, bro, because them Vatos are the SGV homes. They were on a different type of fucking Mission homes. They weren't like... 
There were, now, now, don't get it twisted. Everybody had hitters. Everybody was down to fucking participate in the reindeer games. You know what I mean? Hey, straight up, Holmes. Frosty the snowman. Hey, Holmes, when Christmas time came, motherfuckers didn't open up presents. The Grinch stole Christmas, Vato. Everyone was there singing Christmas carols with these. You know what I mean? It was going down. Didn't matter what time of year. And these were the Vatos that were always in the mix. They were the motherfuckers like Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. They were handling their business. Anyways, Trapel, so um, knowing that, going back up north, I actually get to Carl Holton, man, and I run into the same Vato that had hit me, right? Y pobreci. Okay, this was my time for get backs. I was never a revenge type person, Holmes. I was letting bygones be bygones. Hey, that's just part of the game. You just go ahead and chalk that up. But like I said, I never liked the individual in the first place, man. He always seemed to get under my nerves, bro. And it wasn't because of his volume or because he was a sureno. I just didn't like him, period. Just the way he looked at me and I looked at him and I could tell, Holmes, he wasn't. The way he was looking at me, he wasn't all that, right? And so I wanted to test his abilities. And, and guess what? Gracias, Dios. He granted my wish because the Vata came walking into my compa and I immediately I told him, hey, we need to go and sell and handle business. And he already knew what time it was and he didn't deny the fade, Holmes. He knew that that day was coming if you ever see me. And we went in there and said, okay, do you know what a raccoon looks like? Have you guys ever seen a raccoon? Orale. Rac raccoon guy, right? He got raccooned. That's a well-known fact. Um, there was a homeboy there, Land of Kings. He'll tell you, stamp that, strike that, reverse it. Um, but that's what happened. You know, it, it, my hands were good that day. You know, I'm not going to say they're good every single day, but that day they were. And I handled my business and that was that. Um, and I remember another one of his homeboys came from 12th Street and he hit me up and he was like, hey, what's up? You did that to whoop de whoop And I said, hey, bro, that was that was merely business. A little bit personal, but mostly business. And he says, you know what? I don't like the Vato anyways. He's from my water homes. I'm going to represent. But at the same time, the Vato's a little fucking thinks he's bad. You know what I mean? Got, he's got that Stay Puft Marshmallow Man chest. I said, that's right. You know what I mean? Um, and then it was cool. That was cool. But I always had a lot of respect for the Vatos from 12th Street, the Sharksteros, the Sharkies. You know, and then when I got out and I got older and I started to get indoctrinated and laced up and gamed up, you know, I come to found out that one of the, you know, the first wave of NF members, they had a fucking Vato in there named Tarzan from Pomona 12th Street Sharkies, who's an original NF member, right? Who recently passed away about a year and a half ago, two years ago. But this Vato Holmes um, has a lot of respect. You know, and coming from that body of men that were always on us, bro, always fucking doing missions on us, always bombing on us, always jumping us, always getting down one on one, always putting in that work. I could respect that, Holmes. I could respect his gangster and the way that they carried on that torch, even though he was from the other side of what they consider the other side. That Vato still, you know, was a pure gangster, Holmes, in every form of fashion. And it's crazy because I could sit here and say, man, one of the Vatos from Pomona Torchery Sharks. A legend, a legend in what I represented at one point in time, Holmes. A legend at fucking the push to strive the struggle, you know? And here on the other side, what the, <laughs> these Vatos fucking were on the other side. What the, you know what I mean? They were the enemy got for reals. But it all correlates. It all corresponds, Holmes. It all, it all becomes one, man. He is actually an OG from their barrio. Whether you like it or not, so I was scared. that's the way it is, right? Period. Plain and simple. And a lot of them Vatos, they recognize it and they respect it because at the end of the day, man, you know, you respect a man by his character and for what he did and what he does, man, the work that he put in. You can't take it from no man. No matter what side he's from, whether he's the enemy guy or not, Holmes, respect demands respect. Steel sharpens steel. It's what it is. Trip. So now, I read articles, man. I tripped out, you know, and it always seemed to jump out at me when I would see an article on Pomona 12th Street Sharks. And I think they became made. What, you know, a lot of Vatos in the San Gabriel Valley, of course, have known about that volume. And Vatos down south, you know, have done a lot of time with individuals from there. But where they became nationally known, Holmes, and where their name became, like, out there was, I think, in, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, what year it was, bro, but a 15-year-old kid actually killed, uh, or they're saying, Holmes, I'm not going to say he did it or he didn't, but they're saying, you know, that he had killed a black guy. Right there on some court steps, right? That it was a hit or whatever the case may be. Man, no one knows, so no one can really speak on that. But I remember reading the article and seeing it and saying, damn, Pomona 12th Street Sharks. I, already, I always knew these vaulters would stay in the mix. And they continue to be in the mix from what I hear, man. Like I said, it's not my business to speak on their audio politics or what they're doing and what they're not doing. All I can say is I got a lot of respect for that audio in general, you know? And it's a trip, bro. Like I said, my name, my, my life has always um, crossed paths. And you'll trip out in life, man. You'll like it's just like, man, when you're driving down the street and you see a fucking black cougar, Holmes. 
and you haven't seen a black cougar in six years. Sometimes you never noticed, right? And all of a sudden you see one and you see one on every fucking corner down every block you go. You know what I mean? Or you think it's a fuck I want to give me a whopper today in your mind, homes. The next thing you know, you're looking at Instagram, homes, and a fucking whopper pops up. Have it your way, right? And you're like, fuck, right? It's just a trip. Um, that's the way the world is. I know we've all went through that. It's like deja vu, what the right? And it seems like deja vu every time I talk about the 12th Street Sharkies because my life, since a little, a little kid, man, has always intertwined with these individuals, you know? And respectfully, like I said, we fought homes. We've handled our business. Um, they were very professional. Never once did one of them go down and straight wolf or nothing nothing like that, bro. I remember the cats that used to do that, man. They'd slam off those and then and on both sides, north and south, and then they'd stay wolf. And it's like, bro, it's over. Hey, if you didn't feel like you got yours, bro, spans off. There will always be a next time. You know what I mean? Carry yourself with professionalism, homes. Get up, get handcuffed, get maced, wipe your eyes out. Dust yourself off and try again. Orale, because there will be plenty of fucking tiempo to handle your biz, you know? But it is what it is. Everybody's different, man. I'm not perfect. You know, at one point in time, man, I was a little rambunctious and a little bit rowdy, rowdy piper. You know what I mean? But I'm not like that anymore. I'm more calm, cool, collect, and I just want to kick on back, man, and do what I fuck I do. Just wiggle, you know? Um... But trip, man, this spills basically, man, about the Pomona Toaster Sharks and my interactions with them. It's not a profile on their vario. Their vario is what it is, homes. Very well known, very affiliated, very down for their cause and their push, right? And can no one take that from them? I just wanted to speak on my little personal experiences with them, bro, and to let you know, man, that them individuals carry themselves very uh, aggressively and of a high stature, homes. They these vatos were were proud of where they were from, and they did it like that. And like I said, it was just a trip, man. Uh, coming across certain articles and reading about them, and not hearing that body for several years. You gotta understand, I've been out of the California Youth Authority or out of prison now. I've been out of prison ten plus years, and I've been out of the California Youth Authority thirty plus, right? So to hear. Uh, that body is still after all these years and it's still prevalent and still maintaining and it's still functioning and it's still doing this thing. It's like, damn, you motherfucking sharks ain't playing, right? They weren't playing then and they definitely ain't playing now. That I can guarantee you first and foremost. Um, and I think one of the fucking, the coolest dudes I met from Pomona 12th Street Sharks, man, I want to give him a shout out because he was just a real one, bro. Was Lil Negro from Pomona 12th Street Sharks, man. Shout out. Uh, you're real, I'm <laughs> definitely real. I remember... This Vato was involved in every fucking melee, every one-on-one, -on -one, every liquor store, every telephone pole, all that lit. Now, he was involved in everything, bro. Everything, you know? And I remember he used to press up on individuals. Uh, People would come onto the compa, and he was the littlest guy on the compa, a little dark Vato, you know? Um, he, I, I think he had P12 right here and a shark or something. Hey, Trip out on this, man. And, I, hey, I know it starts, uh, Negro, I'm not going to tell about, you know, you and the homeboy tattooing and shit. But I know that this Vato was cool. He didn't care if we were Norteños. He didn't care. He just cared about, he liked to fight. This Vato liked to fight. And that was it, plain and simple, period. And he wanted to get off with whoever made him mad. And believe it or not, more than he fought with Norteños, it seemed like he was always getting caught up in fighting with the Africanos. I don't know what it was, Holmes. But him and the Africanos, they were fucking beefing, especially the Cripas. Him and the Crips, man, they would go at it back to back. Um, I seen him behind the handball court many a times doing his thing. I, I'd be smoking a meat over here in the corner. And, Who's that? Two Africanos. Now that's about the Negro from Pomona 12th Street. Again? Every fucking day, if they the right? He was just about his business, you know? Me and him never had the one on one, homes. It never came to that. We liked each other, bro. We were cool with each other. He was homeboys weren't looking, he'd be like, Skinner, what's up? You know what I mean? I'd be like, beat your fucking head, all right? <laughs> Getting yours on. He'd be like, shark style, right? He was cool. We were cool. Like I said, our interactions were always decent, bro. Never, never nothing rough. And I think that's why I always have looked at Surrangers and Southsiders different because of vatos like him, Little Ray from Puente, Trooper from Norwalk, certain individuals, man, that I chopped it up with, man, that I've actually had conversations with that kept it respectful with me and showed me, man, that there ain't too much differences, bro. You know what I mean? He, they used to say, come to the dark side, Skinner. Come to the dark side. Where am I going to be from? Primera Flats? <laughs> Charlie, bro. Uh, and that was never a contemplation on my part, man. It was always Merced Dead End Gang on mine. You know what I mean? Period. Plain and simple to that motherfucking wheel fell off. So let's get tape. Put it back on. Keep it rolling. Um, but that was me. Anyways, at the end of the day, man, just shout out to that Vato Negro, man. The body was on hit, bro, on point. I've read up on it. And everything you ever told me was correct. Um, so recognize, man, represent, respect that whole San Gabriel Valle and the Pomona 12th Street Sharks. At the end of the day, 
Vatios are to be recognized, man, and respected for what they do and for what work they put in. Whether it's fucking, you look at it in a bad way or a good way. Hey, we're a rasa. We shouldn't be killing each other. We shouldn't be doing that. But yeah, man, you still respect individuals that garner that. Anyways, I hope that you move fast with a purpose. I hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about uniting the rasa, whether it be from down south, Pomona 12th Street, or the Sanjo Shark Stettles. It's all a shark thing, right? You know, man, it's all a rasa thing. Brown and proud, you already know, man. Hope you guys like the new intro. We're going to continue to bang that out. Thought I'd just bring a little bit more uh, uh, urbanness to the fucking channel. You know what it is. It's for everybody, homes. Tarasa, united. We continue to struggle, but we make it happen.